Hello and welcome to T1 Day 9 of Honors Precalculus. Today we're going to go over a comprehensive review for the upcoming test, which is coming up on the 10th day of class. The 10th day of class. So we're first going to graph a function and then we're going to label all of these or figure out all of these different aspects of what the function looks like. So what does something like this look like? Negative 2 over x plus 3 quantity minus 2. So first of all, we know that this thing, the minus 2, is going to move the graph down, and there's going to be a horizontal asymptote at x equals negative 2 right here, because we know that the base graph, y equals 1 over x, the base graph looks like this, looks like this, with a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So that, that minus 2 right there moves the horizontal asymptote down to negative 2. And then what does this right here do? The x plus 3, that moves it 3 to the left. So instead of having a vertical asymptote here at y equals 0, it's going to move it 3 to the left, 3 to the left. So that's going to be y equals negative 3 right here. So there are your asymptotes. And it's y, sorry, x, x, x equals negative 3. And then that minus 2 flips it over the x-axis, flips it over the x-axis and stretches it. So the general shape we're looking at right here, the general shape, instead of this black one like this, it gets flipped over the x-axis, so it's flipped over like this, and it's stretched vertically by a factor of 2. So what does the general shape look like? It looks like this, and the general shape looks like this. We'll fill in the exact points as we go on here, but we can start answering these questions. Well, what's the domain? It's everything except for x cannot be equal to negative 3 because there's an infinite discontinuity there. What about the range? Is there anything you can't get for an output? Well, the only thing you can't get for an output is negative 2 right here. There's no way to get y equals negative 2. So in this case, y cannot be negative 2. What about intercepts? Well, the x-intercept is when y is 0, and it's great to start that way. So when y is equal to 0, you have 0 equals negative 2 over x plus 3 minus 2 and then you have 2 is equal to negative 2 over x plus 3 cross multiply what do you get you get 2 times x plus 3 is equal to negative 2 so 2x plus 6 is equal to negative 2 so subtract 6 2x is equal to negative 8 so x is equal to negative 4 so we had this down here, let's just move it up a little bit so it crosses at negative 4. So really what this is going to look like, it's going to go up like this, cross at negative 4 and be curved like that. Still a nice curve, but now we know it crosses at, excuse me, not y equals negative 4, it's, those are x-intercepts, so it, the negative 4 is actually right here. we got to move that one over. Excuse me, it's an x-intercept, so it goes up like this. It's pretty steep. So now, let's go over to the side here. And if we wanted to do the y-intercept, the y-intercept is when x is 0. So that's f of 0 is equal to negative 2 over 0 plus 3 minus 2. So that's negative 2 over 3 minus 2. So that's negative 2 over 3 minus 6 over 3. I'm just putting it into thirds, so negative 8 over 3. So it's negative 2 and 2 thirds. So that's really about here. It's pretty steep. So we need to bring this up. We need to bring this up so it matches the intercepts right here. It's still the same curve, it's just going through the right points. So that right there is, and I'll change colors here, I'll change colors. That point right there is 0, comma, negative 8 thirds, and that intercept right there is negative 4, 0. Those are the only intercepts, there's no others. Where is it increasing? If you're a bug traveling from left to right, where is it going up? Well, you're going uphill there and here. So you're actually increasing on the entire domain. So how would you say that? You would say it's increasing from negative infinity all the way to left, all the way to negative 3, the union with everything after negative 3. Where is it decreasing? Nowhere. It's never going downhill. It's going uphill everywhere. What about continuity? There's an infinite discontinuity continuity, I gotta spell it out, at x equals negative 3. And what about concavity? Where is it smiling? Well, it's smiling here. It's concave up. It's smiling there. So that right there is concave up. 
So concave up when it's purple is going to be negative infinity to 3. And where is it concave down? That's going to be smiling down like there in the green. So concave up is the purple, and the green is where it's going to be concave down, and that's after. So that's going to be, so that's negative 3, negative 3 to infinity. What about boundedness? Is there a ceiling to this? Well, there isn't because it goes infinitely up and it goes infinitely down. So what can you say about boundedness? There are no bounds, which I guess would make a cool t-shirt too, but no bounds. So let's find some intercepts. First, let's find the y-intercept, and remember that's when x is equal to zero. So f of zero is equal to negative two, absolute value of zero minus five plus seven, negative two, absolute value of negative five plus seven, negative two times five plus seven, because that's the absolute value of negative five, negative 10 plus seven is negative three. So the y-intercept in this case is zero comma negative three. What about the x-intercept? The x-intercept is when y is equal to zero. So how can you get this to be true? Zero is equal to negative two, x minus five plus seven. You have to do this in two cases here. You have to break it into two cases. So isolate the absolute value first. Isolate the absolute value first. Negative seven equals negative two, absolute value of x minus five. Negative seven over two is equal to, negative two is equal to x, absolute value of x minus five. If you simplify this a little bit, you end up with seven over two equals the absolute value of x minus five. This means that x minus five has to be seven over two or, or the opposite of x minus five has to equal uh, seven over two. Another way to say that too, I like to say it like this, or x minus five has to equal negative seven over two because you can either be on the left or right hand side of zero. So what does that mean? X is either equal to seven over two plus five or X is either e is equal to negative seven over two plus five. And you can simplify those fractions. So the intercepts would be, if you do this out, seven over two is just gonna be three and a half plus five is eight and a half. And this is negative 3.5 plus five is 1.5. So what are our two intercepts going to be? It's going to be 8.5 comma 0 for x-intercept 1, and our second x-intercept is going to be 1.5 comma 0. Those are our two intercepts. Let's work with logs, because I know you love working with logs. So again, the y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. So that's g of 0 is going to be equal to negative 4 log of 2 times 0 plus 1 minus 7. Well, that's negative 4 log of 1 minus 7. Log of 1 is just 0. This is 0. That is equal to 0. So negative 4 times 0 is 0. So this equals negative 7. So in this case, the y-intercept is 0, negative 7. So what about the x-intercept? Remember, the x-intercept is when y is equal to 0. So therefore, you set the output equal to 0. So 0 is equal to negative 4 log of 2x plus 1 minus 7. So now you just need to take this carefully. We're going to add 7 and divide by negative 4. Adding 7 and dividing by negative 4 equals this log of 2x plus 1. And the base, the base when it's not written in, the invisible base is 10. This is in log form. We need to turn it into exponent form. To do that, we start at the base, so it's 10 to that power to the 7 over negative 4 or negative 7 over equals 2x plus 1. So therefore, 10 to the negative 7 over 4 minus 1 is equal to 2x. So x is equal to 10 to the negative 7 over 4 minus 1 all over 2. This is something, if you wanted a decimal, you need to plug it into your calculator. But in this case, the x-intercept would be 10 negative 7 over 4 minus 1 all over 2 comma 0. That would be the intercept. Yes, I'd like you to write them as points. Remember, when we're graphing the sum of two absolute value functions, we first need to turn it into a piecewise function. We need to turn it into a piecewise function. And we do that by looking at the three zones. What makes x plus 4 0? Well, that makes it 0 at negative 4. And what makes x minus 2 0? That's at 2. So we have three zones here, to the left of negative 4, between these two values, and to the right of these values. And to do the analysis, let's just choose negative 5, 
zero, and let's say three. So when you're looking at the absolute value of x plus four, if you plugged in negative five, negative five plus four is an absolute value of negative one, which is one. So you have to flip there. There's a flipping that goes on. So for x less than negative four, we know that this one right here, this one right here has got to be negative x plus four because we flipped it. We flipped the whole thing. Now, what about, um, what about x, the absolute value of x minus two? if we plug in negative five. So if we plug in negative five into that, we get negative five minus two equal to negative absolute value of negative seven, which is indeed seven. What did we do there? We had to flip the sign. So again, it's gonna be negative x minus two. So those are the two things you have to do both times when x is less than negative four, both of these get flipped, both of them get flipped. And glued together, remember, by this minus sign. So four, we'll just do this four x is less than negative four. For that, we end up with negative x plus four minus this thing. So we're subtracting negative x minus two. It's really easy to mess this up. So you end up with negative x minus four minus, I'm gonna distribute this negative first, negative x plus two. And now you distribute this negative here and you get negative x minus four plus x minus two. The x is actually canceled and you're left with negative six. What that tells us, whenever x is less than negative four, the output is actually negative six. So just to piece this together, this is the first third of this. This is the first third of it. F of x is gonna be equal to negative six. I'll highlight this here. It's equal to negative six whenever x is less than negative four. So now we need to do the same thing for the middle when we plug in zero. Take a look, when we plug in zero here, when we plug in zero, it becomes four, and this becomes negative two. So this one's gonna flip, and this one's gonna be stay the same. So what that means is, what that means, and I'll do this over in the space down to the right here, when x is between two and negative four, you know that the absolute value of zero plus four equals just the absolute value of four, which is four, no flipping. So it's just literally x plus four. But when you plug in zero into here, you end up with negative two, which does have some flipping. There's a flip that happens there. So therefore, you know that this one's gonna be negative, again, the same thing as we're negative, x minus two. And we're gluing these together with that minus sign. So these two get glued together with minus sign. So it's x plus four minus, again, negative x minus two. You have to be super careful. So it's x plus four minus, distribute the negative, negative x plus two. Be very careful. So it's x plus four plus x minus two. So that's two x plus two. So that tells us that the output of this is two x plus two when x is less than two and greater than negative four. And you can choose where you want the equal signs. I'm gonna put them here because they do meet up. So again, that's the middle value here. That's the middle value bef between them. Now what happens if x is three or greater? If it's three or greater, you plug in three right there, you get seven. You plug in three right there, three minus two is one. So there's no flipping involved. So you just take the positive. They're both, there's no flipping. So when, when, x is greater than two, when x is greater than two, you don't have to do anything. The absolute value of three plus four is, I'm just picking that three value, is seven, which is seven, no flip. And the absolute value of two minus, what is it, two, yeah, minus two is zero, and there's no flip on that one, it's just zero. So in this case, there's no flipping, so it's going to be x plus four minus x minus two. When you do this out, you get x plus four minus x plus two. The x is cancel and you're left with six. So whenever x is greater than two, it just equals six. So it's six when x is greater than two. So when you graph this, you know that when x, when x is less than negative four, it's equal to negative six. So here is negative four it's equal to it's equal to negative six when it's less than negative four. So it's negative six 
going over. And initially for this graph right here, there would be an open dot there and it would go to the, oh, that's negative six, I'm sorry. At negative, uh, yeah, negative six, that's correct. Negative six to the left. And then you have a graph that has a slope of two and it crosses it two, so it's actually here. And you go down one over two, down one over two, down one over two. Oh, look, it hits there. It overlaps. And then it does this all the way to where x is equal to two. So where is that going to be? Here, here. So this next section is right in the middle. And then it's equal to six when x is greater than it. So this would be the graph of this function. What's the domain? Are there any holes on this? Are there any holes? No. So you would just say the domain of this is just all real numbers. Well, what's the range? Well, the range, it's stuck between two things. It's stuck between, it can be greater than negative six because that's the bottom right here. And it goes all the way up to six up there. So it goes from negative six to six. And is it bounded? Yes, above by y equals six and below by y equals negative six.